Hey everyone, this is Preston with Better Pastures Farm. Welcome back to the channel. So today we want to talk a little bit about tits and udders. But before we get into that, we just turned these cows into this little bigger paddock than normal. We've been still kind of feeding hay and working them through here. We are getting water down by the creek there, which we got to redo because every time spring comes, that creek down there floods and it wipes away our little water gap that we make so I was recently hearing Teddy Gentry talk about when he first started the South Pole breed how important it was that we look at udders and tits when we talk about udder we want a high tuck udder you know that's not hanging down very low and aggressive and when we're talking about tits we want a nice small round tit about the size of your pinky and I'll just show you on this girl she's got a pretty nice tight udder she's not super it's not hanging down there very far her teats are pretty about little maybe a little bigger than my pinky but they're right in there and this cow she'll let me Try to get a, a decent look there. Yeah, see that's a nice nice level hanging bag. You know, the bag's not tilted one way or the other. It's pretty level, it's pretty tied up against her. That's what you're looking for right there, folks. We don't want very low hanging bags. We don't want super low hanging tits. We want a very, you know, very compact system. This girl right there walking away, she's got the same thing. She's the daughter to this one and thrown very, very nice bags and teats. But anyways, he was talking about if if her teats fail, you know, if they get super big and they get blown up, then, you know, ultimately the cow fails because if you have to come out in the pasture and lock your calf, lock your cow up, to nurse the calf then that's time and money and eventually you'll just sell the cow because she's too much work so ultimately at the end of the day that cow just kind of fails so we don't want to overlook you know the importance of good udders and teats and then he said after that he started working on longevity you know this girl's got a nice nice bag and teats on her her bags maybe tilted forward no it's tilted back just a little bit her teats are about the size of my about the size of my pinky but just wanted to point quick little tip out on that then he went to then Teddy said he talked about how he went to Longevity, well, he we went to fertility, longevity, and then uh, obviously we have docility and heat tolerance and stuff like that. But I just thought it was interesting because that's always something that I kind of look at last. You know, I'm always looking at fertility first and um, longevity. But ultimately, when you think about longevity, what makes a cow last in your herd, you know, ultimately is a good set, good bags, good teats. A good way to nurse that calf every year. I just thought that was an interesting point that he brought out. Let's not forget to pay attention to our herds, udders, and tits. Let's not lose that good quality of having nice tight udders, small tits, so the calf can, when it's born, it can get a nurse without having a problem. I had a brother that had two cows that their tits ended up blowing up. They were nice cows. You know, they had the fertility with them. They were doing their job and you know it's kind of hard for him to get rid of them because they were doing their job having a calf every year but ultimately you know if those if that udder and tit fell then the cow ends up being junk he ended up having to lock them up and feed the calf and finally that just didn't work so he's like i don't got time for this so he ended up selling them so long story short it's important to have good tight udders and nice small teats so that we can get more longevity out of our animals 
you know, a lot of these cows were hoping that they can stay in the herd for a long time, giving us calves, and that's where we're making money, you know. If we can keep longevity and fertility, right after longevity, we need fertility. We need these girls to be having us a calf every year. And that's where good records come in place. Keeping track of your records on all these cows, making sure everything's calving, you know, in your 30 or 60 day window, whatever, you, whatever you're running, or whatever's fitting your bill there. But these girls have got to be dropping a calf every year. And if they're not, they're not making you money. And man, with the prices of diesel and everything it is to keep a farm going, we got to have production. And that's what excites me about the South Pole breed. We were running Angus before, and then we jumped into these girls and they just do a lot better when it gets hot and they're eating this fescue they end up just jamming you know we breed right in june when it's the hottest and so we need we need animals that are going to perform for our environment i'm not bashing any other breed because angus perform really good in the cooler climate so anywho i'll get off that soapbox without further ado we're gonna wrap up here and we will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching.